Hello everyone, my name is Elliot. I'm the co-founder of Mnemonic AI, where we create advanced customer intelligence, such as data-driven dynamic personas, or we evaluate the brand personality of our clients. Today, I want to give you more insights about the importance of dynamic personas. For good reasons, personas are the holy grail for customer intelligence in many organizations. 90% of organizations create a better or better understand their customers through buyer personas and 82% state that they have improved their value proposition. If you're not familiar with the persona concept, here's a quick overview. So what is a user persona or buyer persona? Personas describe a semi-fictional character based on your customer base. They shall cover all essential insights about the customer's personalities, needs, pain points, motivations, and demographics, just to name a few features. So how are they created? Personas shall be 100% data-driven, based on quantitative and qualitative data, to avoid human bias. Personas shall represent the actual customer, not the picture-perfect one you might have in your head. Either you have the analytical resources to create them yourself, or use external providers such as consultancies or AI solutions like ourselves to build them. So let's look at the difference between a static and a dynamic persona. As stated above, personas shall represent your current customer. And this concept, this concept comes with challenges. Your customers are human and they constantly change, driven by internal and external factors. We can all agree that the past years have affected everyone. Many organizations create personas once, spend a massive amount of time and resources and let them sit there for years without touching them. This does often more harm than good because you will continue to use the same targeting and communication repeatedly, ignoring the dynamic changes in the market. We are getting bombarded with over 3,000 marketing messages every day and the only way for differentiation is personalization. Therefore, it is essential to create uh, dynamic personas that change and evolve the same way the actual customers do. So, how do we create dynamic personas? Personas need to be based on real data, not assumptions, guessing or gut feeling. The good news is, due to the rise of social media, chatbots, review pages, Gathering the in-moment data points is pretty straightforward. When you continuously monitor outlets where customers talk about your product, you understand changes in needs, motivations, fears, triggers, the moment they arise. Addressing them allows you to drive personalization truly. We'll go into more detail about their resources further down this article. So let's look at the dynamic understanding of changes in persona features. Persona profiles often has the same setup from demographics, the background story, needs, triggers, emotion, go-tos to personality insights. In the following section, we want to demonstrate how and why updating the different persona components is so important. So let us first look at the demographic section. Here's a typical structure of the demographic persona section. They include age, location, language, income, interest, stage of life. Many organizations believe that the demographics of their customer base usually remain the same, which is a fallacy though. Especially the pandemic impacted this part drastically. There is a big trend for people to move out of the cities because they learned it the hard way to be locked up in small apartments in the city center. Due to the rise of home office, people do not necessarily need to live close by the work. Also, the income structure certainly changed. People had to live with short-term work, receiving less money than before. In contrast, others make much more money because the labor market changed from an employee market to an, em to an from an employer market, sorry, to an employee market. Also, interests changed dramatically. Many people suddenly have pets, aiming to become the next cycling superstar like Eddie Murphy. Started an instrument or found some other distraction for the pandemic and they are now an essential part of their lives. Since targeting often uses demographic as a basis, understanding these dynamics and integrating them into the personas is fundamental. 
Now we look at the persona needs. Um, depending on which industry you are operating in, customer needs change faster or more drastically than in other sectors. Let us take a financial management app as an example. Years ago, the markets were booming and there was a massive demand for managing funds to secure retirement. Today, many struggle with rising inflation, plumbing stock markets and the need shifted from um, investing extra funds to being able to sustain without going broke. In both instances, the need for a financial assistance app is there, but with two totally opposite drivers. Accordingly, communication marketing requires drastic adjustments. Another classic example is human resources. We went from an employer-driven market where organizations could dictate salaries, setups and requirements uh, to the market where organizations struggle now to receive applications for their job. The need for a job shifted where employees can make claims as they want and HR departments must understand these changes and offer jobs that meet these requirements. The next part are the go-to's. To win a customer for your business and cut through the noise, you need to tell them right away why your products are the right choice. To do so, you do not only need to require to address their needs, but tell them how your problem solves it or how your product solves it. And even if the need remains the same, the drivers change. Let us take a car buyer as an example. With rising gasoline prices, environmental concerns, rising competition and supply chain shortages, car manufacturers deal with a different market than a couple of years ago. Um, I'm just highlighting two examples. More can be found in the written article on our homepage. So let's look at the need. Customer needs a new car. So years ago, the driver was maybe I wanted to have a faster car. I maybe wanted to have a fancier car. Versus now, the buyer wants to have wants to be environmentally friendly, or he wants to save money on gasoline. Accordingly, the messaging needs to be adjusted and needs to be totally different. For instance, on the on historically, it was the fastest SUV on the planet, or enjoy pure luxury in our new SUV, where it's now more, hey, drive electric and save the world, or you don't need to sweat anymore when you see gasoline prices. When you compare the drivers behind the needs and the required communication, you see how complex how complex it has become for the car industry over the past years. The car industry is not only is only one of many sectors that struggle with this challenge, but dynamic personas that reflect the different customer segments with their changing demands are critical not to lose track. The next part is to create a dynamic representativeness of the different persona clusters or the customer clusters. No organization has only one customer type. Of course, there are differences in the number of customer segments depending on the industry and product, but believing that communicating to every customer in the same way leads to success is unrealistic. And of course, the importance of the different customer segments varies depending on size, budget, churn rate and the customer lifetime value. Understanding the importance of the different segments is critical to allocating resources and priorities better. For example, let us go back to the financial advice app. When the market was roaring, the most significant customer segment represented people with extra income who wanted to grow a strong stock portfolio and needed financial advice on stock picks and analyzing and managing their portfolios. Nowadays, investing in stocks is very uncertain and many people struggle to meet their month end needs. They now require insights on better managing their mortgages or monthly expenses. The segment grew drastically, whereas the financial overflow segment decreased in size. And the change in customer cluster sizes has many implications. The targeting budget needs to be shifted, blocks are, broad block article topics needs to be adjusted, and sometimes a shift, a shift in customer segment sizes requires a change in the product itself, or even the entire business strategy. So, now I want to tell you a little more about the need for dynamic personas to match the customer personalities. Personality is hardwired in our brain. It defines how we react to certain situations, people 
and of course marketing messages. If personality is hardwired, why are dynamic personas so important? Very simple. The different personality traits of the customer base influence how they deal with certain information uh, inf uh, situations like the pandemic, which ultimately influences their purchase decisions. It is so important to understand that because 95% of all purchasing decisions are made subconsciously. We cannot change our customers, but we can certainly adjust our communication and brand personality to match their personality and thereby subconsciously influence their decision-making process. To give an example, we go back to the financial um, advice app. Let us assume a large customer segment is dominant in the following psychographic trait. The most dominant trait is neuroticism. To understand the context, we need to examine what effects that this trait has on how the segment deals with specific situations. People with a high degree of neuroticism tend to experience mood swings, negative emotions like anxiety, anger or depression and are emotionally unstable, pessimistic and nervous. They have a low stress tolerance and are emotionally reactive, often interpret ordinary situations as threatening and complain a lot about them. Considering the recent developments in the world, such as COVID, the war in Europe, or inflation, it becomes irrefutably clear that those external factors severely affect their purchasing decisions. Whereas other segments with, for instance, a high degree of agreeableness and are, that are always optimistic are probably more re resilient to these developments. The neuroticism dominant segment certainly needs much more guidance positive encouragement and attention these days. After we examined how important it is to adjust persona features along the way, I want to draw a bigger picture of how dynamic personas can help the entire organization. They enable you to drive customer centricity throughout the entire company. For decades, personas were a marketing thing, but it is much more. If done properly, they can be the vehicle for customer centricity. We wrote a whole article on how the department or how departments can benefit from personas. So I'm not going into too much detail. Feel free to visit our blog to read. Not only does marketing need to have a dynamic understanding of the customer base, but all other departments. Product development needs to immediately under, needs to immediately understand uh, the the customer needs or change in customer needs and requirements to adjust or enhance the current product features. It doesn't help when marketing adjusts the message, but the product remains the same. Customer service needs to be prepared to live up to the expectations created by marketing and so on. Dynamic personas will allow to do all that. They carry these changes throughout the organization, so everybody understands the ultimate goal of customer centricity and how to achieve it. So, you might wonder, how do you position dynamic personas uh, throughout an organization? If you're the one who figured out how to develop dynamic personas, you might hold the key in your hand to become the customer-centric superhero for your company. Your goal should be to deliver the personas to every department. And there are various ways to do so. One way is to include dynamic personas in the company newsletters. Many organizations send internal newsletters to their workforce to keep them updated on the latest developments. Ask for your own section where you inform your colleagues about the current customer developments. Another alternative is to integrate them into inter in internal network. If you have an internet in your organization, this is also a great place to display them. Usually a news section is perfectly suitable to inform the workforce about the customers. Also, integrate dynamic personas through personal connections. Educate other departments about the concept and importance of personas and allocate those employees that will act as ambassadors. Once there is a proof of success in one area, the others will follow. Integrate the personas by being funny and inspirational. Whether it's a whiteboard in the hallway or the fridge in the company kitchen, these are all great places to display the personas. Maybe even think of creating a most wanted poster of the personas and pin them there. It will undoubtedly attract attention. Finally, 
we now take a look at the data sources to build personas. We are not going into too much detail about the sources themselves, but focus more on the importance of gathering the in-moment data and applying them to the personas. So data sources to integrate into the personas, um, in general, they should be always consist of quantitative and qualitative data, and internal and external data. Quantitative data will help with the basics, such as demographics, whereas qualitative data uncover the needs, pain points, personalities, etc. Additionally, you should always gather external data to provide insights that go beyond the cosmos of your organization. With some data sources, it is easier to follow a dynamic concept, whereas others bring challenges. For instance, for a long time, creating big customer surveys was key for persona creation. The problem is that it usually takes so much time to complete the surveys, and by the time you have analyzed them, the insights are already outdated. Excellent sources for dynamic data are, for instance, Google Analytics, which tracks customers on the website in real time. Chatbot interactions, where customers continuously complain, demand or advise about your product or social media. Be sure that the second something is wrong with your product or there is a better alternative, people will let you know on social media. All you have to do is listen carefully. So dynamic personas are the key for personalization. Customers change, whether we want it or not, and so should the personas. Do not work with them if you can't guarantee that the personas are always up to date. You will miss significant market trends and never reach the goal of true customer centricity. The good news is that creating dynamic personas nowadays is way easier than it was a couple of years ago. Primarily because of the power of artificial intelligence. Well, the data analysis and even the creation process itself can be completely automated. You can even set alerts to get informed when the personas change. If you want to learn more about the automation of persona creation, just reach out to us. If you have any remarks, comments, thoughts on this article or in general, please reach out to us. If you like the video, uh, we would appreciate a like or a comment and um, I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much.